So Microsoft has just released some cool new checkboxes in Excel and unlike the old checkboxes which were floating objects, the new checkboxes are embedded in the cells and when you check them, the cell gets a value of true and when you uncheck them, the cell gets a value of false. They are currently only available for Excel 365 users signed up for the Insider Beta channel but they should be rolled out to all Excel 365 users soon. I will leave you a link on how to join the Insider Beta channel down below in the description. In this video, we are going to explore the new checkboxes in Excel and take them for a test drive. And we're starting right now. All right, so we have here a simple task list where we have some tasks and we're going to check these checkboxes on the different days of the week when we perform these tasks. And we've used the new checkboxes in Excel to create our checkboxes to, and to insert these new checkboxes, we need to select a cell, go to the insert tab on the ribbon and then click on checkbox. And this will insert the new checkboxes in Excel. An alternative way is to use a shortcut, which is Alt N C3 on your keyboard. And this will also insert the new checkbox in Excel. And the interesting thing is that if we try to delete a checkbox by selecting the checkbox and pressing delete on our keyboard, the checkbox doesn't get entirely deleted, but rather it goes into some sort of a ghost mode. And the way I think about it is that the cell has obtained some sort of a checkbox cell formatting. This is not an official term, but it's just how I think about it. And I will tell you why. It's because it's similar to giving the cell a percentage number formatting, for example, where you won't be able to see the number formatting unless you have a value in the cell. And that's similar to the checkbox, where the checkbox goes into ghost mode after the value is removed because it's obtained the checkbox cell formatting. However, it will exit the ghost mode as soon as you check it again like this, because now the cell containing the checkbox has a value. You can completely remove the checkbox though by selecting the cell and going to clear and choosing clear all. And this will remove it entirely from the cell. All right, so if we start checking the tasks in our checkbox, the checked cells will get a value of true and the unchecked ones will get a value of false. And this is very useful because we can do a lot with cells that have true and false in them. Because for example, we can count the task completion rate and we can do that by writing a count if formula and we can count in this range the cells that have true in them, close the brackets and press enter and drag the formula down. And this will count the number of tasks completed. However, we can actually do a simpler formula, which is that we can sum the cells containing the checkboxes, but we're gonna multiply the range by one so as to convert the true and false values to ones and zeros. And then we'll press enter and drag the formula down and this will also count the number of tasks completed. And to get the task completion percentages, we can simply divide that by the count of trues and falses here using the count a function and drag the formula down. And now we get the task completion percentage and we can just change the number formatting of the cell to a percentage. And as you can see here, we get the task completion percentage and we can also add conditional formatting to these cells. So we can go to conditional formatting data bars and we can do, for example, a gradient fill. However, this fill gives the highest task completion rate, the full bar, which is not what we want. We probably want that to be out of 100%. And so the bar should be filled only 43% of the full distance in case of the task with the highest completion rate. So to do that, we can go here to conditional formatting after selecting the cells, go to manage rules, and then we'll select this rule, edit rule, and we'll edit it so that the minimum would be a number which is a zero and the maximum would be a number which is one. And you can also change the colors if you want, but I'll keep them like that and click OK and click OK again. And now we have a nice task completion percentage bar chart here. Another cool thing about the new checkboxes is that you can change their color. You can do that by selecting them and you can change their color by changing the font color of the cell containing the checkbox. And this enables you to do some cool stuff using conditional formatting. So if you select them, go to conditional formatting, highlight cells rules here, and then 
you make a rule that if it's equal to false, then give it a red text and click OK. And then you can create another rule as well. Highlight tells rules equal to. And if you give it another rule that if it's equal to true, then you can just give it a green color and click OK, click OK again. Now the incomplete tasks have red checkboxes and the complete ones have green checkboxes. There is also another cool feature, which is that you can check and uncheck the checkboxes using the space bar on your keyboard. So if you select a single checkbox here and then press space on your keyboard, it will get unchecked. And if it's unchecked and you press space, it will get checked. Now, in case you select a bunch of checkboxes like this, what will happen is whether they get checked or unchecked if you press space on your keyboard will depend on the active cell. So currently the active cell has a check checkbox. So if you press space on your keyboard, it will apply the opposite to all the checkboxes. So in this case, it will uncheck all the checkboxes. Now you can change the active cell on your keyboard. If you press tab on your keyboard, if you press tab, the active cell will go one cell to the right. And if you press enter, the active cell will go one cell downwards. If you press shift and tab, the active cell will shift one cell to the left. And if you press shift and enter, the active cell will shift one cell upwards. All right, so let's have another example. Let's say I have this customer contact list and I want to check the checkboxes whenever I call the customers. And also what I want is that when I check the checkbox, the customer details get struck through. So to do that, I will need to select the customer details, go to conditional formatting and then new rule. And I make a new rule based on a formula. And this formula will be value of this cell is equal to true. But because I need to drag the conditional formatting down, I will need to make sure only the column is fixed. I've pressed F4 twice on my keyboard and I don't need to even type equals true because the default test is that it's equal to true. I will go to format here. I'll make it struck through and click OK and OK again. And now whenever I check a checkbox, the customer details get struck through. Another thing is that I can create a list of the remaining customers that I haven't called, which is by using the filter function. So equals filter and I'm going to filter the names of the customers and I'm going to include only the values where these cells are equal to false here and close the brackets, press enter. And now I have a list of the customers that I still haven't called. I can also sort that list if I need to by nesting that inside the sort function. And there you go, more cool ways to use the new checkboxes in Excel. All right, so are the old checkboxes in Excel dead? And are there not any cases where we should use them? Well, actually there are cases where you should use them when you need a checkbox that is floating and you might need to have it put on a chart, for example. So to insert an old checkbox, you go to the developer tab on the ribbon, which you can enable by right clicking on your ribbon and go to customize the ribbon here. And then under customize ribbon, you will just check the developer tab and click okay. So after enabling the developer tab, you go to insert and then you you just select the old checkbox that we have here. And now you have this checkbox, which you need to connect to a cell, which you can do by either selecting the checkbox. And then here on the formula bar, you just write equals and whatever cell that you want here. And now when you check that checkbox, the cell gets the value of true. And when you uncheck it, the cell gets the value of false. You can also connect it by right clicking and going to format controls. And here under the cell link, you'll just select the cell as well. So that's another way of connecting the checkbox to the cell. So the old checkbox is basically treated like an object where you can align it with other objects. You can also group it with other objects. So you can group it with the chart, for example, going to share format and then group. So that's where the old Excel checkbox shines and might be more useful for you. All right, guys. So this concludes our video today. So let me know your thoughts and opinions about the new checkboxes 
Are you excited about the new checkboxes? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you like the video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.